In 1459, a book was written that contained images so bizarre that even 500 years later, their meaning is still shrouded in mystery. It depicts improbable medieval siege engines and machines of war, figures in extraordinary apparatus and bloodthirsty duels. But key information is missing from the manuscript, and the author is displayed cryptically holding a broken chain. Why was this manuscript ever written, and who could have unlocked its full potential? This book will reveal the secrets of a medieval age far more advanced than future generations would ever imagine. There are a number of ways you can take a castle or fortification. You can dig tunnels underneath it, undermine it. You can do an escalade, which is taking ladders and siege towers up to the walls and piling over the top. Or you can simply try and blow the gates off. But how do you get your bomb to the gates? Well, one idea is to use Jamie here in his armour and say, well, you're wearing armour, just walk up to it. But up there are going to be archers. The power of a war bow at short distance against a knight's armour could penetrate it at certain points. And if an archer was skilled enough, he could find the joints in the plate mail and kill the man inside. Risking knights like this would have been far too a costly method to storm a city's gates. But Talhofer's manual seems to offer a solution. Terry Jones, one of the famed members of the Monty Python team, is renowned for more than just comedy. He's an expert in medieval history. But some of Talhofer's depictions of siege warfare appear strange, even to him. Talhofer's manuscript shows a lot of surprising images. I mean, there's one here, and these people walking up to the castle under these sort of metal bells. I mean, how did they get them off in the first place? Very python has to be. And here's this castle that's being protected by two huge cushions outside the front door. Very odd. <laughs> the description above this cryptic image gives little information away. See, they are going towards the fortress. With the basket, they should lurch around. Within the shelter of the basket, they go. We know that so much in Talhofer works because things like trebuchets have been built and tested. So we know that he's talking about workable things. But when we come across something like this, that's so bizarre, so weird, you think, well, would it work? And of course, the only way to find out is try and replicate it using the clues that are there. So let's build it. Let's shoot things against it and test it. And this is what the team thinks the medieval siege device may have looked like. We've had to guess at the material. Some people say it would have been cast like a bell. Others say it would have been clad in plate armor. I think that would have been far too heavy. One material used in medieval times could have provided the strength of iron without its excessive weight. Hardened leather is tough. It's what armor was made of during the Middle Ages. A lot of poorer knights were clad in cuirbulli, boiled leather, hardened, tough leather. So much importance is placed on what this device is made of because of what scholars believe the structure was used for. Getting men to the very walls of a castle under siege and surviving. As the siege bell drew near to its target, it would have to repel attack from very close range if the men inside were to survive. So I'm gonna give this the ultimate test. We're at extreme close range, less than 10 yards, and Ben here is shooting a very, very powerful bow of 80 pounds draw weight with a heavy war arrow. Do your worst, Ben. I expected that to punch right through. And it hasn't. It's penetrated 
but it hasn't really penetrated that much. Certainly, one of the guys inside is bleeding, but he's not dead. That is remarkable stopping power. I think if we were to double this thickness, we really would have something of genuine defensive capability. A second layer of leather would reduce arrow penetration significantly and still allow the siege belt to be carried by two men. It is feasible that such a device could make it to the walls of a castle with its occupants alive. Perhaps for those looking through Talhofer's arms catalogue and desiring the siege belt, it is possible they could acquire the information about its construction from the fight master at a price. The satisfied warlord could then deploy it in any way he saw fit, placing a bomb, delivering a letter of ultimatum, or retrieving a fallen comrade in the field of battle. But a castle under siege would have more than just arrows at its disposal. When I look at that, it's designed for one thing, and that is to withstand an aerial shot. If you're coming up to my walls and I've got broken masonry, then I am going to hurl them on top of you! That has got a good structural shape, and even very big boulders, I think, with that central strut in the middle. The guys inside, their heads are going to be okay. With the correct military knowledge, these drawings in Talhofer's manuscript have been transformed into a two-man siege bell. <laughs> 